Hi everybody and welcome to this tutorial. I am Mikta Keitaji Masuti from Eindhoven University of Technology and I will show you how to run a daylight simulation for a longer uh, analysis period with LAT 2.0 using the last of the three templates. Uh, LARC 2.0 is a collaboration between Clotilde Viesson from Oregon State University and myself and it is an update to the original LARC spectral lighting plugin for Grasshopper. So we start in uh, Rhino with our simple room model that you saw in the previous tutorials if you followed them. Uh, we have our geometry arranged in uh, uh, appropriate uh, layers. And then I will go to Grasshopper and I will open our last template, the analysis period simulation template. So you can use this template to calculate annual melanopic EDI or subannual melanopic EDI or any other of the outputs of the CIA toolbox or the result of the non-visual direct response med model, which is a model that takes as input a time series of light stimuli in order to predict alertness. So our template uh, has the same structure as the previous two, uh, organized into four blocks inputs, start, process, and outputs. And I will go first at inputs. So we start with uh, selecting our virtual sensors and we have the option to select an individual sensor or a sensor grid. And I will now select individual sensor, which means that I need to uh, select a point for the simulation. And I'm taking this one here in the middle of the room and also a direction point and I'm taking a direction point that is facing towards the window. So these two define a vector, which will be the simulation uh, direction. Uh, if instead of individual, I selected grid, then I would have needed to set a sensor surface, a spacing for the sensors and a height uh, offset from the surface and also a number of directions. But now I don't need to do that because I selected the individual sensor. Next uh, are the daylight inputs. So here we have the analysis period for the simulation. And I want to run an annual simulation, so I will select uh, from January 1st uh, at 12 o'clock until December 31st. Okay, so I set an annual analysis period and then the next thing is to select uh, an EPW weather file and here I have downloaded a weather file for Geneva from the Energy Plus website. Uh, the link to that website you have here where you can download weather files for different locations. And the next thing is to select a time step for the simulation which can be hourly and then I set the time step to 60 or sub hourly and then I set it to a number of minutes. And the reason why we want sub hourly simulation is because we're using this uh, non-visual direct response model, the NVRD model, which uh, as I mentioned earlier predicts alertness based on a light uh, input, a time series of light input. And for this model we need the light data to be with a time step of 6 minutes. So we're using a program of uh, DASIM to subdivide the, the irradiance, the early irradiance, with a stochastic model. So I'm selecting here a time step of six minutes and I'm running this toggle and setting it to true to subdivide the hour. So this is what uh, this uh, the template is doing now. And then I can run this next toggle to, uh, to set the weather file based on the analysis period that I selected. And then we need to select the spectral power distribution, the SPD, of uh, the sky. So here by default we have the D65 SPD, but it can be changed uh, here. Then you need to input uh, the, the values for a different SPD and the same for the wavelengths. 
So this uh, SPD will be assigned for the sky for the entire uh, simulation and it is constant for our annual simulation. Uh, next we have the materials which are the same as you saw in the previous two tutorials. So I need to define, uh, to select a path for a file with the spectral transmittance of my glass and the spectral reflectance of my opaque surfaces. Uh, this material type here, uh, the zero means that it is a glass, the first surface that I have here is a window, and this pipeline component takes the geometry of the Rhino layer with the name window one, which is where I have my glass, and here with this uh, Rhino layer ID of material, I can select uh, the, the ID of that layer. It's the fifth layer, so I select five, and then here you see window one, then this is the geometry that uh, we will take. And then I need here to put a path to a file where I have the spectral, the spectral transmittance. And uh, this is typically in a, a USR file. So these files, they come as output of the Optic 6 uh, software. You have the link to, to that software and they look uh, like this. So this is the output of Optic 6 where you have the wavelengths and the spectral transmittance data. And also I select the interval of my file, which is five nanometers and roughness and specularity of the material. And then the next uh, is to define the opaque materials. So I do the same. I, I select the path to a file where I have the reflectance of my facade here. And these files, they look uh, like this. So I have uh, in one column the wavelengths and in another column the reflectance. And again, the the step, the wavelength interval in the file, the roughness and specularity of material, and the Rhino layer ID for my facade. Here it's one, and this component will take the geometry from layer uh, facade one. And I will do the same for the, the rest. So for my floor, for my ceiling, and for the walls. And the last of the inputs is to define the radiant simulation parameters, which you can do here in this text uh, box. And now I will uh, lower this so that it runs relatively uh, fast. So these parameters are not uh, optimized for accuracy. I'm just uh, setting them like this to run a relatively fast simulation. And then I go here to the toggles. Uh, if, you, if you can see these material components that they were previously red, now they are uh, gray because we put the paths to our material files. So these are not complaining anymore for an error. We have still one more error here, which is the sky component. And this is because we haven't run the first uh, toggle. So if I go to the toggles, and go to this first one. This is the one that will write the sky file and also run a low accuracy honeybee simulation to prepare geometry, material and point files for my annual simulation. So I set this to true and this one uh, runs quite fast because we have, we're not using accurate uh, simulation parameters for this. We just want to prepare the geometry and uh, material and point files. So this is now not complaining anymore, it's gray, and we are ready to run our uh, annual simulation. So I will go to the second toggle and set this to true. So this now will run, and is already running here, six simulations. So Lark runs the simulations, uh, runs three radiance simulations so that we have a nine channel resolution. And for this template, it runs three simulations for the sun and three for the sky separately. 
the sky has the SPD that we defined. Here I defined the D65. Uh, and the sun has, uh, uh, it, is, uh, it is assumed to be white. So I will pause the video because this now will uh, take some time. So the simulation is now complete. And if I show you the process, you've already seen in, uh, a previous, in previous tutorials that here we have the definition of the sky, that this component here takes the, the SPD that we gave as input and splits it into nine uh, channels, which is the material for the sky. And here you have the same for the um, materials the, of the glass and the opaque surfaces. And these three uh, blocks are the blocks that run the honeybee simulations. So here is for the uh, blue simulation for example and these are only used to prepare the material geometry and point files and then we have these uh, three blocks that follow and these blocks are the ones that uh, do the uh, annual simulation so there's uh, here for the for the blue channel analysis we have a component here that takes the material geometry points WEA file, sky color, parameters, and uh, a folder and name, and uh, runs the annual simulation with radians. And then we can go at the uh, outputs here at the last block. And the first output that you have is the alphabetic quantities and spectral irradians, which is calculated here using the CIE toolbox component. So this takes as input the nine channel results that we run for our annual simulation and uh, an action spectrum uh, selection. So here I have selected melanopic and gives us as output the spectral irradiance, melanopic irradiance, melanopic ELR and melanopic EDI uh, in these panels here. And these are written in a, a result file and here we have the path to, to the result file, which looks uh, like this. It's a CSV file, which contains the point coordinates for the point that we run, the vector coordinates for the direction that we run, the month, day, hour that we uh, simulated, and then alpha opic irradiance, so melanopic irradiance here, melanopic ELR, melanopic EDI, and the spectral irradiance from 380 to 780 nanometers. And this file uh, is then used to run the non-visual direct response model that I mentioned before. So this model uh, takes the, the, the time series from that CSV file that we just opened and predicts alertness based on the intensity, spectrum, the duration and pattern of uh, the, the light exposure. And there's a toggle uh, back here in our toggles to run this as well. I didn't start it yet, so I will set it now to true. And after this is completed, we have the, the result of the NVRD model written uh, in a new CSV file. So we have um, uh, also the result here in uh, Grasshopper. Uh, and we have a relative response and a cumulative response. So the relative response is calculated individually for every uh, time step that we input, and the cumulative response is the uh, uh, it, it is aggregated based on the relative response. So what we want after a, a time series of light exposure is this cumulative response, and this is calculated individually per day of simulation. So we assume that a person uh, has no previous uh, light history when they start the day and then the alerting response accumulates over the day and then at the end of the day we have a final cumulative response and then the next day it starts uh, from zero aggregating again. Uh, so we have zeros here because we run the hours uh, in, in the night and then it starts uh, aggregating. 
and this is written in this new CSV file which is uh, the same as the previous one and in the end it has uh, the relative response and the cumulative response and these responses here in my file they start from zero because we run the hours in the night and then here it's the first uh, light hour and the, the response starts accumulating and until the end of the day uh, we have a final value which stays uh, constant uh, at the end of the day so we recommend using this cumulative response comparatively to to compare design uh, options because there is no uh, absolute scale for uh, NGRD. And finally, we have the visual outputs uh, over here. And here we have two options to select a point view direction and preview time series, and to select a time step and preview the spatial distribution. So I will select the first. And here we have simulated only one uh, point in view direction, so I don't really need to select it. But if I had more, then with this slider here, I could uh, choose the one that I want and display it in right now to see if the one that I chose is the correct one. And then here I have uh, in these panels the time series um, list, so all the dates that I simulated, the Melanov GDI for each time step and a comparison with a threshold and I have given it here a 250 mlnv GDI uh, threshold to compare with and then here I it checks if the simulated one is above 250 or below 250 so I have quite high values here because I run one view direction towards the window uh, and if I select the other option select time step and preview spatial distribution then I go down here and then I can select the month day and hour that I want to, to preview and a few legend options and then there are some components here that visualize the result in Rhino and here because again we run only one uh, vector this visualization is not necessary but you can imagine that if we had a grid then this would be more useful we have a legend with melanopic edi and the time step that we are displaying here and a colored vector with a value of melanopic edi uh, so this is the end of this tutorial thank you for listening and good luck with your simulations